So in today's video, we're going to be talking about Aurora stock and if Aurora could do the same thing Afria done for the earnings report that they just announced. There's a possibility, but because of Afria, I don't think Aurora will drop to a near 52 week low. The only reason why Afria popped up 40% is because Afria stock hit a 52 week low and because the stock was such in such an oversold territory that it was easily able to bounce all the way up to you know seven dollars and thirty three cents from five dollars and twenty three cents in one day because it was simply way oversold and uh the earnings report blew expectations and the stock jumped forty percent in one day uh, Aurora could do that, but the thing is Aurora will not be hitting its 52 week low uh, I I don't think Aurora will go down to seven Canadian dollars uh, I think that Aurora is going to you know be, Before the earnings report come out. I think Aurora is going to be hovering around nine Canadian dollars So I think you know, I think Aurora is going to push up to maybe 10 10 50 so that's probably going to be about a 10 10 to 20 percent return not a 40 percent return but if Aurora was to hit around nine Canadian uh, seven Canadian dollars uh, it could make a 40 percent return like if we look at you know 668 you know it can easily make a 40 percent return by hitting around 10 Canadian dollars but at the moment, I don't think that will happen simply because of Afria. I don't think Aurora is going to tank all the way down to seven Canadian dollars. But I could be wrong. And Canopy's earnings, which is coming up, could drop the entire cannabis market. I don't think so. I think uh, Canopy will be announcing decent earnings uh, because it's uh, this this earnings report will be ending on June thirtieth, two thousand nineteen. So we look at the calendar, uh, as everyone is aware that on April, the Ontario government opened up the retail section of the cannabis for Ontario. Uh, and from what I heard in the news, Ontario had a massive amount of lineups on opening day. There was a lot of supply shortages on the, in the stores. So that means that sales w were very, very good in Ontario uh, for the month of April, May, and June. At least that's my opinion. So I think Canopy is going to announce amazing earnings report. Uh, they're not going to be cash flow positive because Canopy has indicated that they will not be cash flow positive. But they, their gross margin will improve. Their revenue will be dramatically higher. Uh, and hopefully their net income and uh, their, their profits will be, uh, their, their net loss will be dramatically improved and they won't lose as much money as they did last quarter. Hopefully, but we'll see what happens. Um, Aurora has not announced an earnings report yet. They should be soon, but they haven't yet. Uh, I think maybe they're waiting until... Uh, Canopy announces their earnings and then they will announce a date for earnings after, uh, right after Canopy announced earnings. At least that's just my opinion. I don't know for sure, but I know Aurora will be announcing earnings probably late August, maybe early, maybe uh, early September, late August to mi early September. That's when I think Aurora will be announcing earnings report, but at least that is only my opinion. I don't know for sure if they, when they will be announcing earnings. Uh, but I, I honestly believe that Canopy, when they announce earnings, I think the stock will pop another 10% to 15% in my opinion only. But we'll see what happens. Uh, last quarter, Aurora announced earnings. It was not bad. It was about... 65 million dollars of net revenue which is not bad and next quarter is definitely going to be an increase in net revenue why because the ontario government has opened up 
they will include three months of Ontario sales and uh, I think Aurora did pretty well in Ontario I could be wrong but I'm pretty sure Aurora has one of the top uh, brands in Canada uh, from what I can see Aurora products sell really well uh, you know and their medical patient will definitely be increasing next quarter simply because they're probably stealing medical patients from Cantrust. That is my alarm clock. Sorry about that. Uh, yes, they will be increasing the medical patient. That is for sure. Uh, their cost, cash cost to produce program will decrease. I think it's going to decrease to maybe $1.20. So that will be helping up with gross profits. That will be increasing their gross margins to around 60% because last quarter they had about 55%. So I think next quarter will be around 60% with an increased revenue around 80, 80 million, maybe even closer to $100 million with a 60% gross margin, which will increase the EBITDA which will make the EBITDA positive which will push them into uh, net income pro uh, will push them into a, net, uh, a positive net income which will be a profitable quarter if they were a profitable quarter I think that the stock will be pushed up in my opinion pushed up to about uh, you know, ten like a ten percent profit. No, I mean sorry, uh, like a ten percent uh increase after earnings, ten to twenty percent. It all depends on where the stock price is, in my opinion. Uh, so I'm gonna end off the video with uh the Aurora Cannabis Executive weighing on the company's latest earnings report. So let's begin. Check out shares of Aurora Cannabis lighting up on the back of its earnings report last night. The company missing Wall Street expectations, but still posting a 20% jump quarter on quarter sales. Aurora now the best performing pot stock this year, up more than 70%. For more on the earnings results and the state of the cannabis industry, let's bring in Michael Singer, Executive Chairman at Aurora Cannabis. Michael, thanks so much for joining us. We do appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Um, it's an exciting time in cannabis. You've got recreational sales going on along with medical. Where do you see that pie shifting to in a year or two years? And I guess embedded in that question is how do margins look once that shift occurs? Um, I'm presuming that medical marijuana has higher margins than the recreational side. So they do, yes. Our, our focus uh, is really right now in three different buckets. So we continue to build out our international footprint. Um, we're currently in 24 countries. We're, you know, the first uh, or, or first mover in each of those uh, or most of those countries. We see that as a tremendous opportunity where we have very limited uh, competition. And so for us, it's about uh, continuing to build out that global footprint. We're also focused on uh, the U.S. market. Uh, that's a market, obviously, that is too big to ignore. Um, we're, you know, we're, we're in the middle of creating a very unique uh, strategy so that we could leverage, obviously, everything in our uh, in our grasp so that we could take advantage of um, of course, uh, to some extent, two prongs that we the, the way we look at that market. One is obviously CBD, and we want to certainly operate within the federal regulations that currently exist, and those obviously are very limited. Um, we expect those to expand over time. And, and through Australis, which is a company that we created uh, last year and spun out to our shareholders, um, Australis will play, and, and they operate as a small MSO in the U.S., they'll play a part in our overall U.S. strategy, and we're, sort of, we're going to leverage um, our relationship with Australis to ensure that we continue to deliver on a more, a more global U.S. type strategy. Um, and third, and maybe most important, is we're continuing to explore a different number of partnerships with the help of Nelson Peltz. As you recall, we engaged Nelson as a strategic advisor uh, recently, um, and our relationship with Nelson is nothing. So you guys heard that, right? Multiple partnerships. Multiple partnerships. So Aurora is not going to just go with one partner. They're going to have multiple partners. That is very exciting. I hope they announce at least one partnership sometime this year that, because they do need money because according to uh, the, an article, uh, oh, sorry, according to one of my, my research, they owe uh, $200 million plus dollars as debt payment to a certain bank or somebody from 
because that, that's their payment for 2020. So they do need a partnership sometime this year. And hopefully they, if they do, if they get a, like a partnership and they get about $1 billion of revenue from the part, uh, sorry, of, of cash from the partnership, then that would take care of any kind of bears talking about debt. Uh, and that will push Aurora stock up dramatically after earnings report. And if they get a partnership deal today, I mean, uh, sometime this year, I can see Aurora hitting all blue sky breakouts and hitting 20 Canadian dollars. At least that's just my opinion. We'll see what happens. Uh, but that's what I predict that will happen near the end of this year. We'll see what happens. So let's continue on with the video. Nothing but amazing. Um, Nelson is, as you know, a very thoughtful, experienced, um, and very strategic thinker. Um, and very well connected in the consumer goods uh, and ironically in the, or, or surprising to us, uh, at least the pharma space. Um, you know, our model was very different than, than our peers, uh, where our peers decided to partner with one and potentially give away control of their business. We always felt the, the strategy for us was to uh, engage with multiple partners in different market segments. And so with the help of Nelson, we're exploring a number of potential partnerships uh, in some very key market segments. Are you, are you taking a swipe at acreage then? <laughs> do you think no, that do, do you do you think that deal was a bad deal? I mean, could you see <laughs> deals like that happen again? Is that some sort of template? Do you think for the industry? I, I mean, it's a deal we understand. Of course, is that a deal that 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 makes sense for Aurora? Um, not at this time. Um, you know, our, our strategy is going to be a little different than that. For us, we don't feel it's necessarily important to pick one horse today. We're really looking across the entire value chain in the U.S. and we're looking at uh, you know opportunities that'll help us determine where do we want to play along that value chain. And so we'll, we'll make decisions that are in the best interest of our company and our shareholders. We're patient, as we've always been, um, and we'll ensure that when we make the decision to, uh, to operate in the U.S., it's going to be one where we see a long-term potential. Hey, Michael, it's Tim Seymour. Thanks for coming on. You know, we spent a lot of time talking about some of these, these new dot-coms that, that aren't making money. Should we be concerned about the cannabis, uh, you know, multinationals, and we'll call you that because you certainly are, um, that are not making money? Or tell us about the road to profitability. So our story is a little different. We put out some guidance very early in the year, um, and, and we put a stake in the ground that forced us to be very disciplined about yep. our business. Uh, we said, one, we were going to um, uh, you know, obviously ensure that we, we were very careful about managing our expenses. Uh, and the stake we put in the ground was that in Q4, which is the April to June time frame, would, we would be uh, EBITDA positive. Um, based on the results we just delivered, our, our revenues are up, um, our margins are up, uh, our production volumes are up significantly. They've doubled uh, in Q3 versus Q2. Um, and based on the discipline we've, we've, uh, we've instilled in, in our, uh, for example, our SG&A, where we've, we've, to some extent, stabilized those expenses, um, and now with revenues increasing significantly, we feel we're you know, on track to deliver um, positive EBITDA starting in the fourth quarter of this year. So that's a game changer for us. Our facilities are all coming online. We're, you know, our Sky facility is now operating at capacity. And so the volumes coming out of that facility will enable us to continue to tap into the different um, channels that, that exist for us. Of course, the Canadian medical, the Canadian recreational, and the European um, or the international medical markets are something that we're very focused on today. Should we expect some sort of deal or partnership with a major consumer products company given Nelson Peltz's involvement with your company? That's our end game, of course. Yeah. We expect we expect that we will, uh, you know, that we will at some point um, uh, announce some type of partnership. What I could tell you is um, Nelson is incredibly engaged with us, um, and we're putting all resources to ensure that the deals we make are the ones that make sense. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're, we're actually prioritizing which of the market segments we want to participate in first, second, and so on. Uh, and so we're already engaging in those type of discussions. They take time. Uh, we're, we're, we're patient. Um, but we're very excited about the, the, the status of those discussions. And, of course, with Nelson and his team's involvement, um, they are uh, incredibly helpful and uh, incredibly thoughtful about right. how we're thinking about our partnering opportunities. Michael, great to see you. Thank you. Michael Thank Singer, you. Executive Chairman at Aurora. Oh, that CNBC video was very positive they were talking about uh they were talking about cash flow positive they were talking about partnerships they were talking about an aggressive u.s strategy i think moving forward aurora story is not going to end here 
I honestly believe that Aurora stock being at, you know, $8.39 is still buying opportunity. Uh, I think, you know, it, there's a possibility it could dip all the way back down to $7. If it does, that, that just creates even a bigger buying opportunity if it hits 52 week low. Right now, it's near 52 week low, but it's not exactly 52 week low. But I'm very bullish on earnings. I think once earnings come up, I think the stock will pop at least a 20%. Uh, if not more, so I'm gonna definitely be playing uh, options uh, when earnings come out. But it all depends on where the stock price is. If the stock price is at nine Canadian dollars or ten Canadian dollars, I would be very nervous. But we'll see what happens. Uh, I think uh, Aurora stock's gonna be hovering around nine Canadian dollars when earnings come up, and it's gonna be pushing the stock to maybe ten. 1050 that would be almost a 10 to 20 percent pop but you know that's just my opinion i don't know for sure we'll see what happens at the at the, uh in the meantime i think next week aurora is going to be trading between eight to nine canadian dollars uh if it hits eight canadian dollars i think that's an opportunity to pick up some shares uh, right now it's not even a bad time to pick up shares, but I don't like you know I I think it could hit I think it could be lowered down to at least eight Canadian dollars, but at least that's only my opinion. Uh, unless Canopy came out with earnings and crashed the market, which you know which is a possibility. I don't I mean I don't think that will happen. I think uh it's gonna you know do decently well. Of course they're gonna be. They're gonna lose money, but they're not gonna lose money on a big on a big scale. At least that's just my opinion. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this content. Give me a thumbs up. It helps my channel grow. Subscribe for future updates, and have a great day. Bye.